Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD, and welcome to installment number 20 in the IC7300 from A to Z series. It's hard to believe that this series is actually at 20 plus a couple videos. When I first announced that I was going to go through the entire 7300 manual, I didn't really give a lot of thought to how many videos it would take to do that. I think it was Ben Franklin that once said, in for a penny, in for a pound. So, we'll just keep plowing ahead. Today, we're going to look at the voice recorder functions. As is always the case, there's a lot to get through, so let's get to it. All right, the voice recorder functions start on section 6 of the manual at page 6-2 but before we can get into the voice recording function there's this little note on the page that says that in order to use the voice recorder you need an SD card so we're gonna jump ahead to section 8 just briefly so that we can look at inserting and formatting an SD card uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. The SD card slot is right here on the radio, and you need this for a number of the different memory functions on the radio. Uh, not to store frequencies in memory, but if you want to save them so that you can reload them into the radio uh, or load them into another radio, you do need the SD card. And we'll get into those in another episode. So, putting in an SD card is pretty straightforward. Uh, like any other device, you just push it in and then you'll notice that the little SD card symbol up here on the upper right of the display came on when I put that in. This is a blank card that I've put in. It's two gigabytes and we're gonna go to the menu selections here and if you go to set uh, and it's not on the first page and I've been using the up and down arrows and the touchscreen functions and just as a reminder, we did this way back in the early episodes, the multifunction knob also allows you to scroll through the menus and operate the menu functions as well. So we're going to go down to SD card, and you can push the multifunction button to select it. And we've got SD card info and uh, load and save settings, save form which is um, I gotta remember what save form is we'll cover that when we get to the full SD card episode format unmount firmware update and so on so let's just quickly look at the info for the card this is a blank card so we have just under 2000 megabytes free on our 2 gigabyte card and the manual says that the radio will support up to a 32 gigabyte card. You'll notice here that this will record 35 hours and 35 minutes on this 2 gigabyte card. So 2 gig is probably plenty for most of what you're going to do. But you can certainly install a bigger card if you want. So I am going to go down to the format option. And I'm going to select format, format OK yes and when you format the card and we'll take a look at this on a laptop here in a minute uh, it doesn't really do a a blank format or a format in the sense that you um, that you would understand it for a hard drive uh, or some other disk device uh, formatting the card really all it does is it will put an IC7300 folder on the card and then a number of folders underneath that so let's take a look at that really quick. Okay, I've inserted the card into the laptop. And I'm looking at the card here, and you can see that the IC7300 has created a folder called IC7300. And if we double-click and look in here, we've got Capture, Decode, Setting, Voice, and Voice TX. So these are the folders that it creates for the various um, items that it can store on the SD card. We're going to be looking at voice and also voice TX today. All right, let's see if we can make a uh, contact here and we'll do a little bit of recording off the air. 
November 4, no, yeah, November 0, Alpha Zulu, November 0, Alpha Zulu, from Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victor Delta. WA2, IVD, this is N0AZ. Yeah, good morning, Howard. Appreciate you uh, making the sked here with me so we can... Uh, we can demonstrate a little bit about recording audio on the 7300 here. I'm going to just uh, reach over here and uh, turn on the recording so we can record the QSO. So I'm just going to hit the quick button and hit record start. Yeah, you're coming in a good uh, 10 or 20 over. Yeah, you as well. You're, uh, you're peaking between 20 and 30 over S9 here. If only all of our HF contacts could, contacts could be this good. Okay, so I am uh, recording now on the rig, uh, of course, as well as recording here for uh, YouTube. But uh, just wanted to get a little bit of audio back and forth and then show how the, the radio transitions between the transmit and receive record because it'll create different files for each one of those here in a, as we go through this. Yeah, no problem. This is uh, a nice test um, for local communications anyway. I'll, I'll let the audience in on the secret just uh, so they know that you're not all that far away from me, maybe a mile or two. So this is not exactly a DX contact on 20 meters, but it does provide for some good audio. And... Uh, I guess one of these days we'll have to do a video on the, the big brother of this radio, the, the 7610 that you're running. Yeah, that might be interesting. The uh, uh, 7610 has proved to be a very uh, stable radio for me anyway. Yeah, no, it definitely is. And then I'm uh, going to want to try the uh, 705 here and try to get my hands on one of those maybe in a year or so when that comes out. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here on the uh, on the radio. I just uh, hit the menu, and I can even stop in mid-recording. So I've stopped the radio recording, but uh, I uh, appreciate you getting back to me this morning, and uh, hope you uh, enjoy your Labor Day. Yeah, we have some uh, family coming over this afternoon, so it uh, should be an enjoyable day. All right, very good. Well, appreciate it, and uh, we'll uh, catch up with you again here soon. November 0, Alpha Zulu from Whiskey Alpha 2, India, Victor Delta. Okay, thanks for the contact. Uh, N0AZ, I'll be out. Okay, now that we've recorded a contact, let's go take a look at what it looks like to play that back. And before we get to playing it back, I'm going to apologize in advance for the audio quality here. Ever since videos 8 and 9, where I showed you how to connect the audio out from this radio up to a mixer, and I've been using that for all the audio that you hear in these videos, um, you haven't had to hear anything out of the speaker. One of the things that I learned preparing for this video is that the recorder playback function on the 7300 does not play back through the line output connector on the back of the radio. It only plays through the speaker on the top of the radio or through the headphone jack. So I'm gonna turn the audio up here and uh, let you listen to it from the rig so the audio quality won't be quite as good as what they've been recently. And then let's squelch that so you're not listening to background noise. So let's look at the playback. We're going to go into Menu, and we're going to go into Record. And on the Record function, I'll, uh... That's interesting. Ah. It wouldn't let me go up and down because there is no other pages. This is the only page for this um, function. So I want to go into Play Files. And then it would show me all the folders here with the various dates. Right now there's only one. So this is the folder that has the contact that we just made. And then 
this page now has several, and you can see there are several recordings here. So let's look at how the format is. It gives you the date of the recording, the time, tells you the frequency, the mode, upper sideband, that this is a RX or receive recording, and then it's eight seconds. And then the next one, same frequency, you know, slightly later time, and this is the TX transmit recording, and that's 34 seconds. I guess I'm clearly more long-winded than my friend that I spoke with. So if you just touch on this, it will take you to playback. Yeah, you're coming in a good uh, 10 or 20 over. Now let me pause that. The playback menu here is very similar to what you're going to see on a you know smartphone podcast player or any other sort of touchscreen player. You've got play, skip forward, skip back. This skips to the next recording. This skips to the previous recording. The skip forward and skip back skip back, skip back and forward by a set amount. In this case, it's 10 seconds. So if I touch that, it goes to the end since I was didn't have 10 seconds left. If you touch it again, uh, I guess it won't skip to the next one. So if I touch this, it'll skip to the next one. Um, so this is a little longer one. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, you as well. You're... Uh you're peaking between 20 and 30 over S9 here. So now if I touch forward, it should skip forward 10 seconds and back 10 seconds. And according to the book, if you are within one second of the beginning of the recording, the skip back will skip to the previous one. Yeah. So there you go. That skipped back. Now, the other thing that you can do here is the skip forward and back default to 10 seconds. I'm going to go back a couple of menu functions here. If we go down here to player set, skip time, you can change that so you can make it anything from 3 to 30 seconds. Uh, and again, the default is 10. So we'll go back into playing the files. And again, it shows you for all of the files that you have here that um, it gives you the time and all the frequency information. So it's actually a very nice display. Now, uh, that information is all available on the SD card in the file. And if you want to use this audio so that somebody doesn't have to listen to it through the speaker, you can put this into your computer. And we'll take a look at that here next. OK, as you can see. I have reinserted the card into my laptop. This is running Windows 10. And you can see the IC7300 folder here. So we'll go into that folder, and then we've got the other ones that it created, and we'll go into the voice folder. And then you can see there's our date folder from when we made our contact. And then now, here are all the WAV files. So it stores the audio as a WAV file. And this works in Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's a standard file format. And then you've got the normal information about the file. There is one other piece of information. On the rig, it showed you the frequency, the mode, and uh, whether it was transmit or receive, which was very handy. That's actually captured in the metadata in the file. And what I'm going to do here is in Windows, you can add the tags for audio files or video files. So I'm going to put the title here. And then let's actually move the title over to the left. And we'll make that field bigger. And you can see that the ICOM, as part of the title, you get all of that metadata. So it puts, you know, they, everything starts with. IC7300 voice recorder data, but then you've got your frequency, your mode, whether it was receive or transmit, and then the time and the, sorry, the date and the time, which of course is a little bit redundant because it's also here in the file name, but the title has all of your information. You could use this to search for files, say for example you were working a contest all day and you logged 
the whole contest, you could search for a frequency or the time when you made a particular contact, and you could look it up on here and then play back any portion of that um, to get the information if you weren't sure if something got logged correctly. Uh, this would be great for emergency communications. It's just a very nice feature. That covers QSO recording, the file formats, and the metadata that you get. Next time, we'll take a look at the recording options that are available and finish out Section 6. And then we'll look at Section 7, which is the transmit voice recorder. This allows you to pre-record messages for CQs and other transmit operations for contesting, etc. I hope you enjoy these videos. If you do, please consider subscribing by clicking on the little radio that pops up in the lower right corner. Likes are also appreciated. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.